Wrigley. We went off on a limb and we tried a new flavor. What's that mean to you? Nothing. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the video. So today we're gonna break down my iPad dash mount. And this video here is gonna help you guys decide if you want it or not. In my opinion, what I think on actually dash mounting the iPad, stay tuned to the end of the video. Wrigley, are you gonna help them decide if they want to put the iPad on their dash? The pros to having this dash mounted is for one, you kind of get that newer car feel, I guess Tesla feel, whatever you're going for, I don't know, but I, when I do have this mounted, a lot of times I'm just going to use Spotify. The only thing is, I don't have a data package with my iPad, so if I don't have my music already downloaded, I can't listen to it. So the only thing I do is I do hook up my mobile hotspot on my iPhone, which I get about 60 gigabytes per month which is plenty for as much as I use this in the truck. The only other downfall, I do use my phone quite a bit. So say I'm using my phone, bring the iPad in, I've got to connect the iPad to the truck, and then I've got to hook up my hotspot to the iPad. So it's kind of, to me, a process, and that's why a data package is going to help you guys if you're faster. But at the same time, it's not the biggest deal, especially if you just download your music and your playlists are ready to go and you're not trying to download any new music or you know if you guys are on you know your lunch break whatever you can pull up YouTube watch YouTube videos while driving I wouldn't recommend it just because with the laws these days they are cracking down really bad I know of a kid that he was driving with YouTube on listening to a podcast but because the video was playing it was distracted driving and he's he got a ticket for it and I think he can't drive company vehicles because of it it's it's on his insurance so it's kind of a big deal so just be careful if you guys are going to try to watch videos while driving now the other positive thing with this say you guys don't have a factory navigation and you're looking to do maps with it that's going to be your other biggest help because your phone's kind of small and maybe your phone you don't want to use it for maps per se maybe you're on a phone call so the multitasking you're going to be able to get with using this and maps is going to be a huge benefit. So if you're just trying to get a media device in your car and you don't have a factory screen, navigation, whatever, I would probably use this 90% of the time, maybe even more than that. But because I have the in-dash display already, this just isn't as big of a deal to me because literally all I ever use is Spotify half the time or I go to Sirius XM radio. The other thing is my backup camera is on my dash, on my in-dash, so when I do have this up, I either just don't use the backup camera or I have to pull it down. Not the biggest deal, but the only reason I like to be able to see the camera is maybe if I'm at a gas station or a busy parking lot, I can see if there's someone behind me, a person walking, car. That's Other than that, you know, just keep it old school, you know. We didn't have backup cameras back in the day. Wrigley, so far, do you think the iPad dash mount is worth it. He still doesn't know. He's not sold on my review. Alongside with the iPad mount, I do have this magnetic mount for my phone, which I have a magnet in the back. Throw it up, and boom. 14 subscribers, guys. Come on. You better hit that button. Hit that subscribe button. And if you guys want me to make a video on my home screen here, those are my custom icons, and then I could show you how to to do the blank space as well. So drop a comment below if you guys want to know. My in-dash that I do have, because if you watched one of my prior videos, I upgraded Sync 2 to Sync 3, which has Apple CarPlay. But when you plug in, Apple CarPlay is not wireless. You have to buy a dongle, and I have not committed. So I'm going to plug in via USB but the thing is the iPad does not work with Apple CarPlay you might be able to jailbreak it or something like that but just just the way it's set up right now even plugged in CarPlay does not work so just keep that in mind as well I do have my hotspot connected so I will show you guys just my map function Des Moines so having the big map function 
is is pretty legit, so I will say that. We're gonna go for the taste test, Wrigley. We're gonna give this a try. So this is this is literally my go-to. I've heard good things, but something tells me I'm still gonna like this one more. Probably because when I was a fat kid and little, I would eat, oh, I would crush a whole bag of, of Warheads. So maybe that's why that's my go-to. But this is it. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. That's a toss-up, man. Between that Warheads one, it could be a, a potential tie. And that was the last orange cream on the shelf at Quick Trip. I figured it had to be pretty good. It didn't disappoint. So we got maps pulled up. We're gonna go to Viking Lake directions. Two hours, three minutes. Fastest route. We are going completely the wrong direction. I will say, having the big display for maps, yeah, it's 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 pretty nice for sure. On road trips, I could definitely see the benefit of using the iPad with maps and route. Spotify, no chill, four days. Ooh, look at that photo there. Yeah, uh, hit up my playlist, no chill, four days. It uh, it's a banger. You guys actually don't know how it's mounted on my dash quite yet, so the next step we need to do, the next test, we need to make sure it, it's it's up to standards. So we are going to do a simulation. We are going to go over a set of railroad tracks that I know suck ass. And that if you go over 45 over them, it's not smooth whatsoever. But for the sake of this video and the sake of this tutorial, I gotta make sure it's not gonna fall off. I have faith it's not going to and we are going to hit the railroad tracks. It's a 45 speed limit, but we're gonna to try to hit it about 55. We're gonna see if the iPad stays. Well, there you guys have it. We just hit that railroad track going about 55. Didn't even budge, didn't even budge. We need to get into the mount system, where you need to buy it from, and how easy it is to install it. This is eight inches in diameter, which is why there's not a whole lot of exhaust to choose from right now, because there's not a whole lot of shops that can even make this. Is it just me or has Chipotle's, I feel like Chipotle's qualities went down. Like it's still good, it's still healthier than most places, but I just feel like the quality hasn't been what it used to be. So the positive part is you can grab lunch, catch your catch your newest uh, YouTuber's video that just came out. We're gonna do a taste test too because I tried that new chicken from uh, Chipotle today, the Polo Asado. better than their regular chicken. Let's break down the mount system that I have. First thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna run up to your local Walmart. Now I believe they still carry these mounts. This is the cheapest I found, even amp cheaper than Amazon. All right guys, this, this is the reveal. Wrigley, hey, Wrigley, are you ready for the big reveal? High five, high five, high five, high five. Give me a high five, sit. Good dog. Oh, and so we have two magnets. I actually just I bought this case specifically for this. These magnets, five fifty a piece. So two of them, you're gonna get you know probably six. I think like you get a pack of three magnets with each one. So literally five bucks a piece. You can see they're pretty slim line. And that was half the reason that I was drawn to these mounts. The price was actually the cheapest that I have found mounts anywhere. But it's because they're so slim and I didn't want my iPad to stick off like two foot from it. So, oh, Wrigley's panting. We need some air condition. So the way I did it was, is I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to take my case off. I stuck these magnets so the adhesive side is down. So they're actually just stuck to the case rather than being stuck to the iPad. I just thought that this was a more cleaner, effective way to doing it. So I just mounted them, you know, it's basically as best as I could. So I just threw one magnet on, leveled it, 
by my eye, I didn't actually take a level to it. And then I stuck the other magnet on, and now I know it's locked in place. Then just stick your iPad back in your case, and you'll kind of just get like a, I know pretty much where it needs to be. I know there needs to be, the way I, I have it set, is there should be a little gap right here. So I kind of just know now it should be locked in place. If it's not, it's gonna fall, but generally it's stuck. And those mounts are literally $5.52 a piece, 11 bucks. You'll see a lot of mounts on Amazon or wherever stick out further, kind of like this one here for my phone. It actually sticks out quite a bit. So you would not want this because then your iPad's gonna be five feet at you. That's the mount system and it's, to me it's perfect. Do I think it's worth dash mounting your iPad? Yes and no, I'm, I'm still 50-50. I've had these mounts now for probably a solid three months, I don't know, three months. I just can't get past using it on a regular basis because I have Sync 3, which has Apple CarPlay, and it's got my rear view mirror, and literally all I ever do is I just use Spotify or Sirius XM radio. Well, if the iPad's thrown up, I have to move it to switch back to Sirius XM. I don't really watch too many videos. You shouldn't be watching videos anyway. It's distracting, and I don't do Netflix. And I don't use it that much. I don't use my, I bought the iPad because I actually, I do airbrushing on the side. I don't do it as much, but I do custom airbrushing. Maybe I'll make a video on that and show you guys some of the work I do, but I do some pretty legitimate work. It was just for side cash um, back when I didn't make as much money. So I bought the iPad to draw on it and also use it for a note taking device. Now, is it phenomenal for that? Yes. Was it cool at first? Yes, but it lost it lost the cool factor to it, and I don't really use it for work. So for me to just carry the iPad around on a regular basis, it's just more of a hassle to me. That being said, if I didn't have my Sync 3, my display already in my truck, would I carry it more? More than likely, I would carry it around more. The only reasons I, I have actually left the mounts on, I actually bought the mounts and I was like, whatever, 11 bucks. If I hate it, I'll remove the mounts. $11 down the drain. I've spent money on worse things. I thought about removing them, but I just left them because I think in the event I do road trip out of state or a couple hours away, I think I will throw up the iPad. But 99% of the time, if I'm in town going to work, just doing regular errands, I'm not going to have the iPad mounted. I better see you guys on the next one. Wrigley, what do you have to say? Wrigley, what did you think of the new flavor? You're, you're, you're not a help today. Wrigley, you have to end this video today. It's your time, okay? And pow!